You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. I just want to encourage you. You maybe haven't heard this before, but we have a heritage and a legacy in our church. And next year, we're 40 years old. But our legacy and our heritage goes back well before that. We were planted out of, out of what was originally Richmond Temple in Melbourne. Like our, our legacy and heritage, we are, we are connected to the faith, amen. Isn't, isn't that, encu- that encourages me. And so we get to continue the legacy. We get to continue the heritage so that generations, so that young people, so that older people can hear about Jesus. Amen? God is good. Well, I'm, I'm going to do some entry-level teaching today on holiness. Who's excited about that? I, I just I really want to encourage you today to lean into this. It will uh, open your walk with Jesus to a whole other level of depth. Often we hear like we're going to a whole other level of like that way. How about we today? Our holiness is going to take us to a whole other level of depth. Now, uh, if you've been a Christian for a while right now, you may be tempted to switch off. Uh, it's an entry level message after all. And um, you may have thoughts going through your head. I am well beyond that. The pastor should know I'm well beyond the entry level message. Well, the depth of your holiness isn't necessarily connected to time saved. And I don't say that in a demeaning way, but I want to encourage you, just because we've been saved a long time, doesn't necessarily mean that our holiness matches the length of time that we've been saved. Holiness is connected to vulnerability and obedience. I want to encourage you to go deeper today. Now, if you're... I've only been saved a little while. It's just like, oh, this isn't relevant to me because you know this is for the people who've been saved a long time. I want to encourage you today that holiness is for every single person who utters the words, Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord of my life. Holiness is for all of us. And it's a journey that we take to be more refined, to look like Jesus. Amen. So some questions today. Who, who is holiness? What, what is holiness? Where does holiness come from? How do we exercise it? How do people see it in us? I just want to encourage you and myself today in the Lord that it's a, it's a call for each of us. Holiness is a call for each of us to pursue the holiness that we've been given through Christ. Now, maybe some of you were told that when you got saved, it's like, you're saved, everything's good now, you're going to heaven. Well, that's true, but it's not all of it. It's just the start of the journey, amen. Maybe you have been told something that's not necessarily all the truth. Maybe you've been told that if you try and live really well and be kind to others, that that's a definition of holiness. I, I, I just want to like bring some clarity to that today, that if you try and live well, if you try and be kind to others, that's great. You, you're doing good in the world, but it's more of a moral compass at work rather than the holiness of Jesus. So what is holiness and where does it come from? Well, the dictionary defines holiness as a state of being in total devotion to God. But what's the biblical definition of holiness? Well, we're, we're going to go back in time this morning. We're going to go back to Leviticus. Who loves the book of Leviticus? Some people are like, is that even a book? Is that, is, it is a book in the Bible. And we're going to go to it today. Leviticus 11.45 states this, For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. Thus you shall be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 19.2 says, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So, what is holiness and where does it come from? The biblical definition of holiness is God. God is the biblical definition of He is holy. God is holy. 
So, but that just seems like such an intangible. It does, doesn't it? But it's going to become more tangible as we go through the message today. God who is perfect, God who is without sin, is holy. And we're going to see in the Scriptures today that holiness for us as followers of Jesus is normally defined by being separate or set apart. You know, as the book of Leviticus states, God is holy and He is set apart from everything that is not God. God is set apart from everything that's not God. And we as God's people are called to be holy and set apart also. Set apart from what? That's the question, right? What are we called to be set apart from? Are we called to be set apart from people? Are we called to be set apart from things? No, we are called to be set apart from sin. Everything that is not God, sinful things, we are called to be set apart from. So thoughts like this. maybe I'm just going to put some thoughts out there. What comes from my lips? What has control of my mind and my emotions? What's taken in through my eyes and my ears? Sharp tongue. Bitter spirit. Penchant towards sexual sin and sex that's out of God's plan for marriage. Be encouraged, all of us, we are called to be set apart from sin, to be holy as God is holy. Have you ever heard of the scripture that says cleanliness is next to godliness? Oh, hang on, that's not a scripture. It's one of those things, right? It sounds right. It sounds like a scripture. My guess is it's probably gleaned from the scriptures. We talk about God is holy. It's like, well, if God's holy, like holy is cleanliness, right? Well, cleanliness is next to godliness. You can see it's an easy, it's an easy way to connect the dots. And I would say that it's probably being gleaned to fit a moral expectation rather than a, rather than a holiness calling. A moral expectation of cleanliness is next to godliness. Go and clean your room. Right? <laughs> See, we're set apart from, but not separate from the people we are called to be a beacon of light to. Set apart from sin, but not set apart from the people who need to hear the good news of Jesus. Amen. It's not as simple as trying to be morally pure. You'll notice that in all these scriptures and in all the different versions, it doesn't talk about being morally pure. It talks about holiness. Trying to be morally pure, I just want to encourage you, it's, it's a work of ourselves. Ultimately, we're trying to achieve a state of human holiness, human purity, But if we're trying to do it by ourselves. No, we, we can't do it by ourselves. God is holy, and He makes us holy. See, the holiness that we're called to can only be achieved by, and hear this this morning, can only be achieved by accepting Jesus as Lord and Saviour. That's where our holiness comes from. It's the forgiveness of sin that comes from Jesus. It's the sacrifice that allows us to be sanctified and consecrated. He is the one who makes you holy. Now, I just, let's get some scriptural significance around this today. Who thinks that scriptural significance is important in church? It, yes, it is, by the way. If you were such, am I meant to say yes? Yes, it is. God is holy and there is a desire for humankind. His desire is for humankind to enter into holiness as well. For all, for all people, God's desire is for holiness for them. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 7 says this, For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Notice that it doesn't say, For God has, called us, uh, has not called us for impurity, but in purity. No, no. But in holiness. In holiness. Holiness is not purity. Purity is something that we try and put on. It's like, Look, everybody, I'm like really pure. I'm, no, I honestly don't look behind here, but out here, everything, holiness starts from the inside and should eventually make its way to the outside. Amen. 
So where does our holiness come from? Well, I've already answered that today, but I'll say it again. God. God makes us holy when we accept Jesus as Saviour. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Well, if God is holy and God only dwells in holy places, when you accept Jesus, you become a holy temple, a place fit for holiness to dwell, a place fit for God who is holy to dwell. Amen. So, oh, but, but there's all these other things going on in my world right now. I'm struggling with this thought and that thought. God has made you holy, a holy temple fit to house holiness himself. Amen? Oh, but pastor, if you only knew. Um, One more time. God has made you fit to house holiness. Through Jesus, God makes you fit to house holiness. Well, how do we develop holiness? So if I've been made holy, but there's, there's these other things that I'm like, I'm struggling, I'm struggling, I'm struggling. How do we develop our holiness? Then? How, do, how do we step into it and go deeper into our holiness? Well, Hebrews 12, is, you're going to love this this morning. Hebrews 12, verse 10. You ready? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. I want to encourage you this morning. Maybe you've heard that. You're like, oh, I bet my, my parents didn't know how. Some parents know better, some parents, it's okay. This is where it gets good this morning. This is God's grace for us. But God's discipline is always good for us. So that we might share in his holiness. How do we develop our holiness? By taking on God's discipline and his correction. Now, maybe you hear the word discipline this morning and you're like, hey, because discipline represents something that is like, rough and brutal and it's like, oh, or silent and cold, whatever your experience is with, with discipline. That's not God. Remember, what is God? God is holy. God is love. Amen. God doesn't deal with us harshly. He's gentle. He loves us deeply. He is the example of what fathers and mothers are called to be in the family household. Can I encourage you, if you're a father or a mother, pursue being godly in the way that you love and discipline your children. Think about your experience. Do you want it to be the same for them? Or do you want your representation to be one of, geez, my parents, they, they really looked like the holiness of God in my household. Did they get it right all the time? Not all the time. But they really did do their best. So we share in his holiness as we respond to his correction. Who loves correction? It depends who's bringing it, right? Often there's people in our world that best intentions, best intentions, but they don't quite bring it in a loving, a loving way. So what do we need correction from? Well, correction from what? Old ways, the old life, the old patterns. Every now and then they, they tend to just creep in a little bit. And it's like, no, and Jesus and God comes alongside us. And I remember the holiness that I've put inside of you, the holiness I've called you to develop. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. God's already done the miracle work, but we need to put one foot in front of the other. We have control over what comes in through our eyes. We have control over what comes through our ears. We have control over what we do with our bodies. Amen. We get to choose whether we purify ourselves of everything that contaminates body and spirit. It's your choice. It's like, oh, but, but I'm so far down that it's an addiction. Well, it's time to get some help with that. You cannot work this journey alone. You're struggling with upfront things that have control. It's time to get some supports in your world. A pastor to pray with you. Maybe they need 
then they need to encourage you to go and speak to a counsellor who will take you through the deep things of why that is such a big thing in your world. Don't, don't say, oh, it's, it's too hard. I'll just come to church. The pastor will give me a top-up message and I'll go into the week and then repeat until I die. No, there's so much more. Don't let that be, don't, that can't be your end. It, it can't be. See, when God offers correction, he offers a better way through his word. It's our obedience to him that develops our holiness. Amen. Got some walls up. It's like, no, God, you're not touching that area. Oh, it's time to just... Can I encourage you? From personal experience, it is better to come before God and say, God, I'm just bringing down this wall because I want you to work with it rather than be thrust into this place because the circumstances that happen in your world... And like, it's like a shaking that happens. No, no, look, just, just come before God of your own volition. Say, God, I need some help with this. Don't let it bring your world into rubble. Don't let it rock your marriage to the point where you're not sure whether it's going to go on any further. Get out in front of it. Say, God, I, I bring this to you. 1 Peter, verses 1, uh, chapter 1, 14 to 16 says, don't be conformed to your former desires, those that shaped you when you were ignorant. But as obedient children, you must be holy in every aspect of your lives. Just as the one who called you is holy, it is written, you will be holy because I am holy. See, when we've been Christians for a little bit, uh, we tend to enter this place. I don't, know, I don't know why it is, but we tend to enter this place of where we think that we've nailed what it means to be a Christian. I want to encourage you, don't stand on that ledge for too long. Like it's a long fall. Don't stand, it's like we, we haven't nailed it. Yet Jesus is holy and has made us holy, but we need to pursue we need to pursue him and everything that he has for us. We need to come to him as obedient children. You know, he wants to make every aspect of our lives to be made holy. You know, young children, they are prone to take your discipline and direction at face value. So like if you're a good, good parent and your child knows that you love them, if you come to them and you're like, I just want to encourage you, maybe don't do that because if you touch that, like you're going to burn your hand. Most children are like, oh, my parent cares for me. They haven't wronged me yet. So therefore, I won't touch that. Most children. Um, yet as we get older, we tend to find ways to bend the rules to justify our personal desires, even when we know that our current desire is more akin to our old desires. See, we were ignorant before we knew Christ. We were without understanding. But now that we know him, when you come to know him, now you're called to be holy. Don't let your justifications remarry you to ignorant behavior, to ignorant thinking. Don't, don't allow yourself to be remarried to the past. God didn't just separate you from that. He saved you from it. It's the old life. It's dead and it should not be remarried or revived. Amen. See, what can undermine growing in holiness? Well, Sin, obviously. <laughs> obviously sin. And today I'm purposefully not going to mention a specific sin today. If I, if I did, uh, some of you would be upset because I've mentioned your sin. If I don't mention your sin, you're going to be happy because I didn't mention a specific challenge. Therefore, it allows you to continue in justification and others will just feel justified because I missed yours altogether. <laughs> Rather, my encouragement is for all of us to soften our hearts to God today. Listen to his loving discipline that calls you to holiness. 
So he's called you to be holy as he is holy. So how do we outwork our holiness? Because it's one thing to have holiness, but you've got to do something with it, right? You've got to use it for the work of the kingdom. You've got to use it to go into the world and share the hope and be a light of Jesus. Well, how do we outwork our holiness? Well, the simple one is don't sin, right? Perfect. I'm outworking my holiness. I'm not sinning. True, but what, what about this? What if outworking your holiness starts in a simpler way? Mark 12, verses 30 to 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind and all your strength. The second commandment is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. What if this is the lens that we're called to outwork our holiness? What if the two commandments that Jesus gave us, and remember, he's given us two commandments. What if these two commandments is the way that he's called us to outwork our holiness? I, what if, right? <laughs> what if? He gave us two commandments. What if? No, this is the way to display to the world the holiness that is placed inside of us. Love God with all your heart. See, essentially, we define this in the local church as being in a relationship with God. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Be in a relationship with God. And I would hazard to say today that that commandment, that first commandment, it's, it's something that we do fairly well most of the time as individuals and as the church. But you know, the church at large is known for people responding to the hope of Jesus and then continuing in a personal relationship with Jesus. Awesome. Outworking the holiness that you're called to by pursuing a relationship with God, with Jesus. But I'd also hazard to say that the second commandment has been seen as perhaps an optional extra. It's like, oh Lord, I, I can't afford the optional extra. So I can love you, but loving others? Oh, <laughs> loving others as I love myself? Whew. It's almost like when you go to McDonald's, like, can I can only afford the small meal. So I'll, I'll take love for the Lord. But I can't, I can't upsize to the large one. The large one being love the Lord your God and love others as you love yourself. Maybe as I get a bit further along in my holiness, then I'll upgrade to commandment two as well. To the full package, yeah, th then I'll do it when I'm a bit more holy. See, the second commandment is part of outworking our holiness. If we are truly on our way to being changed and because we've been transformed and renewed by Jesus, then the way that we love ourselves and the way that we love others is part of outworking our holiness. I know this is like, maybe for some people this morning, like, that's a little bit confrontational because I hate myself. I want to encourage you that many people have taken that journey and it doesn't have to be a stopping point. In fact, can I encourage you? Don't make that the place where you lay down. It's a journey through. It's not a resting place. That's, that's a hard place to be in. That's a, that's a challenging place to be in. Allow God to minister to you. Maybe even if there's some good people in your world, some pastors, some leaders, a counsellor, maybe it's time to sort of maybe even open up a bit of vulnerability to someone and say, you know what? I, I can't love other people well because I, I don't love me well. I, I need to start a journey with that. Don't let it be your stopping place. How, how do people see his holiness in us? Do people see holiness in you? John 13, 34 to 36 says this. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. 
you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. See, when we are loving each other well, loving our family members well, loving our enemies well, I've got to love my enemies. It just says to love others as you love yourself. It doesn't, there's no criterion of who the others are. <laughs> so maybe down the bottom of the page, there's like a little, like one of those little like A things. It's like, oh, only the people I like. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> see, people will see the holiness of God in us if we can learn to love each other well. Then they'll be like, oh, those people, they're followers of Jesus. I can tell because they love each other well, even when it's hard. See, the world will see the holiness of God in us by the way that we love one another. It's by the way that we love God and the way that we love others as we love ourselves. Now, I want to encourage you. You can, you can pray a ton. You can worship a ton. You can hold people to a higher bar than what Jesus held for you. But at the end of the day, they will know we are Christians by the way that we love and treat each other. In case you missed it, you can pray a ton. You can worship a ton. You can hold people to a higher bar than what Jesus held you to. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they will know we are Christians, followers of Jesus, by the way that we love each other. It displays the holiness of God in every single one of us. So I want to encourage you again today, if there's areas of your life that are off limits, untouched by the holiness of God that dwells in you, that lives in you, it's, it's time. It's time for each and every single one of us. It's time to truly empty all of that old life, the patterns, the behaviours. You know, the behaviours that the world says is okay, but God's Word clearly says for us, that's the old way. It's no longer called to be part of us and our journey forward with Him. It's time to give it all away so you can step into all of the holiness, the deeper holiness that God has for each and every single one of us. I want to encourage you, holiness, again, it is not a game of morality. It's not a game of morality, of proving that you're better than someone else by how moral you are. In fact, I would say that potentially that behaviour is pious. What does that mean? I'm holier than you. Can you, can you tell? I'm preening here. It's like, I'm, I'm so, I've got it together. No, humbleness. Humility, following the ways of Jesus, displaying that, yes, I have been wounded, but Jesus healed me. Yes, life has been difficult, but, but I've just I've followed the ways of Jesus. I've, I've sought counsel. I've been encouraged when I needed encouragement. I've given encouragement when people around me have struggled with the same things that I indeed have struggled with in the past and maybe even still struggle with every now and then. It's not about being more moral. It's a pursuit of holiness, a pursuit of Christ-likeness. Amen. Loving God and loving others as Christ loved us. We ourselves, amen, are the outcome of God's holiness. Aren't you grateful for that? Did you hear that? We ourselves are the outcome of God's holiness. Wow. Response, the response of obedience. I don't know about you, but that's been one of my difficult challenges in, in my Christian walk. You know, when you, you grow up in a family and like discipline is like, you tend not to want to relive it, right? It's different for everybody. Response to obedience. God's love. God is for you. He wants the best for you. He doesn't want to withhold anything good from you, but He needs us to purify ourselves of those things that aren't meant to be with us. Therefore, it's verse 13. Once you have your minds ready for action and your thinking clearly, place your hope completely on the grace that will be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Don't be conformed to your former desires, 
those that shaped you when you were ignorant, but as obedient children. You must be holy in every aspect of your lives, just as the one who called you holy. It is written, you'll be holy because I am holy. I want to encourage you that if there's a wrestle inside of you right now, so I cannot wait to get out of here. This is, this is too much. I, I, I need to get out of this room. God is at your door today and He is knocking. So come on. There's so much more for you. Don't continue down this road. It's not the road that I've called you on. See, when you acknowledge, when you accept Jesus, when you say with your mouth, I believe that you went to the cross. I believe that you were buried. I believe that you rose again on the third day. God comes and dwells in you and makes you holy. Amen. He makes you holy. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Follower of Jesus this morning, you're God's temple and He dwells in you. About to make a decision to follow Jesus, you will be God's temple. He, He dwells in you, makes you holy. You're called to be set apart from sin. This is for all of us. You're called to be holy as He is holy. You're called to be in the world a world of people that don't know Him yet. Be separate from sin, but never be separate from those who God is calling you to, amen? You're set apart from sin, but not separate from those who need to hear the good news of Jesus. So, oh, but uh, those people that need to hear it, I'm struggling with the same things that they are. You need to take someone with you. You need a fellow disciple to stand next and say, Brother, sister, we're going to share the good news of Jesus and then we're getting the heck out of here. Hey, don't, don't, don't separate yourselves from people. Oh, they're, they're such sinners. Oh, that sounds like a moral high bar to me. Maybe if we turned our moral piety, maybe if we turned it into prayers of, God, I see what they're struggling with. I see it because that's the same thing I used to struggle with. But by your grace, you set me free. By your grace, holiness now dwells in me. God, I pray for them. Let your grace and your holiness dwell in Use me, Lord, to be a beacon of hope and a light in their world. I'm going to pray for people in a moment after the service is finished. I know that God's speaking to hearts today. There's a freedom that people are going to step into. A Christian walk shouldn't be drudgery. If you feel like it's a rainy day and you're like marching down the middle of a canyon that's just mud, it's time to step into some freedom, amen. God wants to elevate you out of the mud. Who loves homework? I didn't get any hands. Oh, oh, one, one. Awesome. Thanks for encouraging me with that hand. I know you didn't really mean it. Um, (laughs) No one really loves homework. But I want to encourage you that this homework, on the other side of this homework, is biblical freedom. So here it is. Every day this week, I want to encourage you to read. Every day. I I don't care whether it's in the morning. If you're like an early riser, read it in the morning. If you're like someone who goes to bed at like when other people are waking up, read it before you go to bed. Could be in your lunch break. Whenever it is, it doesn't matter. This is what matters. Can I encourage you this week to read Romans 6 out of the message version of the Bible? Anyone? Great. Romans 6. The entire, the entire chapter. Yes, the entire chapter. It's only 23 verses. It's not like one of those long ones. And it starts off with this. So what do we do? We do? do we keep on sinning? So God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign... How can we still live in our old house there? I'll let you keep reading this week. 
It's such a revelation of God's goodness and what we've been saved from and led into. We need to close, close our eyes for a moment today. Now, if you don't know Jesus today, if you're not in a relationship with Him, God wants to come and offer you forgiveness of sin today. He wants to come and offer you a, a full life. Romans 6 verse 14 says this, Sin can't tell you how to live after all. You're not living under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. This is what you get when you step into salvation through Jesus. A freedom given to you of God. I just want to invite everybody today, if, if you don't know Jesus, not walking in a relationship with Him, I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer after me. And the whole church is going to join us in praying this prayer. But this is a, a prayer of asking for forgiveness of sin and being known by God personally. Why don't we pray? Dear God, I thank you that you sent Jesus, that he went to the cross, the grave, and rose again for the forgiveness of my sin. I confess it with my mouth and believe it in my heart that Jesus rose from the grave. Forgive me of my sin. This day, I choose to follow you and live in the freedom that you so freely give. I surrender my heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Prayed it for the first time prayed it again because you've been off your own journey a little bit. I want to encourage you, well done for getting started on a journey with Jesus. If you're online, well done for getting started on a journey with Jesus. But don't stop there. It's time to go a little bit deeper into the holiness. You need people around you to encourage you with the hope of Jesus, to, to walk with you on your walk of following Jesus. So after the service, if you didn't come with someone, can I, I'll be out the front. I'd love to talk to you about the decision you made. If you're online, there's a link on the screen right now. Get in contact with us. We want to encourage you of how to follow Jesus and what comes next. God's good, amen. amen. You know, in a moment, the service is going to be over. But uh, I, if there are things that God has spoken to you about today, I'm not going to put any parameters on it. If there are things that God has spoken to you about today and you know that you need a pastor to stand with you and pray with you, lay hands upon you, I just want to encourage you. Don't walk out the door and leave it for another day. Let's not let another day be 10 years ahead, eh? five years ahead. No, no, let today be the day that you step into the freedom of the holiness that God has for you. Amen? Amen. So if that's for you today, hang around, come up the front. We'd love to pray with you. For everyone else, don't rush off. Spend some time out in the foyer, fellowship with each other. But uh, I want to encourage you, just, just make your way towards the front. God bless. We pray that that message was a blessing to you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, first of all, congratulations. We think that that is incredible. And secondly, if you go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps, our team has put together some resources as well as there's some information there for how you can get in contact with one of our pastors because we'd love to encourage you and connect you into the life of the church.